Hello everybody, this is Jessica, and in this video I'm going to be creating this Be Inspired art journal page using some of the supplies from the February 2021 Mixed Media Inspired box. So I'm working in my large dilutions journal, and I'm just starting to lay down some color using the Dina Weekly Media Gloss Sprays in Lemon. So after the gloss sprays had a chance to dry, I'm going to start applying smaller pieces of the Tim Holtz Ideology Type Set Collage Tissue. And I'm gluing all this down with Dina Weekly Media Gel Medium and a Finabar silicone brush. Now, if you've had any experience with gluing down tissue paper, you know that it's almost impossible to get it completely smooth. There's usually wrinkles, and quite often you can even end up tearing it. But I've discovered a trick, and that trick is this Finabar silicone brush. And by using this brush, it's gentle enough that you can completely smooth out your tissue paper. There's no wrinkles, and it is nearly perfect on the page. So that is my secret to completely smooth uh, gluing of rice papers, tissue papers, or anything is that Finabar silicone brush in combination with um, Dina Weekly Media gel medium. That is the magic combo. So I'm going to continue to just apply this all over my page and I'm using different size pieces and also turning it so that the lettering on this tissue paper goes in different directions. Some of it I'm overlapping and as you can see here, I'm just applying it in different areas. There's really no rhyme or reason to where I'm placing it and just where I think it looks good. So sometimes the smaller pieces are on top of the larger piece and I just keep doing this until I'm happy with the final result. And then I let that dry. So now I'm going in with a paintbrush and some different colors of Dina Weekly Media Heavy Body Paint. And these are Elephant sand and buff and I'm just going to very loosely put this on the page and I'm trying to retain the brush strokes so I'm not letting it blend I'm just putting it on very loosely so that again I can see that brush stroke and where I put it on so I'm just going to go over different areas some of it's going to go on the collage paper some not and then I'm just going to use my finger it with some water just to uh, soften some of the edges and give it a little bit more of a vintage age distressed look. So some places you can still see the brush strokes and others you cannot. And then I decided I wanted some drips so I'm just adding some more water and then tipping my page to let the drips run and move. And then I let that dry completely. So now I'm going to use my bl mini blending tool and a honeycomb stencil. And this first layer of paint that I'm putting on is just regular white paint. And I'm not doing complete coverage because I don't want to lose my background. So some areas I'm not going to apply as much paint as in others. And I'm going, and because the stencil doesn't fit the entire page, I'm just going to move it by lining it up and then continuing until the page is filled. So after giving that a second to dry, I'm going in with another layer of paint, this time using Dina Weekly Media Apricot. And I'm not doing complete coverage of this either. And because I have that white paint underneath, you're actually going to see the correct color of the apricot on here. So I'm just going to continue doing that all the way down the page. And now I've got a, a clean blending foam and I'm going in with archival ink in saffron. And the interesting thing about using archival ink now at this point is that it is a transparent dye ink. So as I'm layering it over, you will see the different tones, the different um, fade in and out as I put more ink in different places than others. And it gives you a different look than just using continuous paint. So I'm going to do that all the way down the page. And now I'm going to go in with some ancient paint, once again from the Dina Weekly Media line. And I'm also doing very sporadic coverage of this also. And because this has a little bit of um, metallic sheen to it, it, you can't really see it on the camera, but it does have a little bit of that metallic now in, in the honeycomb pattern. So I'm just going to put that in a few places. And then I'm going to leave this and let it dry. So as I was looking at this page, I decided that the honeycomb pattern was too perfect and the lines were too distinct. So I decided to come in with some with two different colors, 
uh, ancient again and gilt. And I'm just putting that on with my finger and then using a paper towel to uh, soften that, rub it off. But yet it still leaves a little bit of that paint on the page. So it's mostly just adding a little bit of a tint to the page and adding a, and giving it a little bit of texture. And you can see it also softens out the background and blends it in so that there is some more depth. Now to use up the rest of that extra paint, I'm just taking a paintbrush and putting it around the edges of the page. Now this is a dry brush, so as I get very little paint on my brush and I start to brush it over some areas, you're going to see when I freshly apply paint that it's going to have a really nice coverage in other areas. I'm just getting the hint of a brush stroke, so I'm doing this not only to add a nice border around the outside, but to also add some textural brush strokes throughout the entire background. Now it did cover quite a bit of the honeycomb pattern. So in a second, you're gonna see, I'm gonna grab my stencil and while that paint is still wet, I'm gonna go over with a, a damp baby wipe. I'm gonna wipe away some of that paint, not completely all of it, just some of it to bring back that honeycomb pattern and give us a almost a tone on tone lift now in that dark, there's gonna be white, whitish pops of the honeycomb pattern, which is really interesting. So I'm going to keep repeating this technique all the way down the page. And again, it's really important to note that your paint must be wet to do this technique. If your paint has dried too much, it won't really come off very well with the damp baby wipe. And you're going to just be scrubbing your page, which you don't really want because then you can run into other issues of tearing and pilling the paper. So it's important that your paint is still wet or it will not work correctly. So because I did apply this paint so thin in some areas, it is uh, actually dry. So it's not coming off as nice as it is in other areas where it was a little bit thicker. But that's okay because it just added to the texture of what I was trying to do. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. So now I'm going to start stamping the B stamp. And this little bee has a crown on it, but I didn't want to have a crown for all of the worker bees. So I'm just using a piece of washi tape and sticking it on my stamp to cover up the crown. And then I'm inking it with archival black ink and then removing that washi tape to stamp it and then repeating that all the way down the page. And that's how you can see all the little worker bees have no crowns. And I also stamped the bee on some different uh, papers craft paper, some music note paper, and just some regular white paper and cut those out. I didn't worry about cutting out the legs because I'm going to end up stamping those on the page to put the legs back in. So I did I just cut the legs off the bees because I'm going to stamp that in in a little bit. So now I'm using some more pieces of that uh, collage paper we were using earlier in the background and some burlap. And I'm just going to glue it down on top of my background because a lot of that pattern was covered up. Uh, and just you can see hints of it coming out through the beehive honeycomb pattern. So now I'm just going to add a few of them back in on top for more layering elements. And I'm once again using the uh, gel medium and the silicone brush. So after I have those pieces down, I'm going to uh, stamp some more bees. Once again, using my handy masking off with my washi tape and I'm just reusing that same washi tape piece for all the stamping and you can see I just have it on my finger and then when I'm ready to put it back on I just place it back in place and ink it up and then peel it off and it sticks on my finger while I stamp the next one so the reason why now I'm adding these extra bees is this is these are going to be the bees that I layer with um, my cutout bees but I wanted to have legs on them, obviously. So these images are going to be the ones that I uh, layer um, for the legs. You'll see what I mean here in a minute after I finish stamping these all out. So I'm clustering my focal point images around my actual focal point, uh, which is that center piece of burlap there. So I'm just grouping the bees around the outside. And now I'm going to begin gluing down all of those bees that I fussy cut earlier. And I'm going to be doing that with uh, Dina Wakely Media Ultra Thick Gel. And I like this particular glue, especially when I'm doing collage because it has about a 10 minute dry window. And that gives me some flexibility that if I don't quite like where I put something or if I want to reposition it, it gives me the freedom to move it and lift it 
and not be committed to exactly where everything is the very first time you put it down. You can, of course, use your favorite uh, glue for this. This It's not glue is glue. So, but this is the particular glue that I like to use because, again, of that 10-minute drying window. So I'm uh, just using my finger. You can, of course, use a brush or an application tool, but I find that using my finger is quick and it's easy and it's very uh, simple to clean off your finger with a baby wipe. So that's what I'm doing for this. So I'm just going to continue working my way around uh, that center burlap piece, gluing down all these images that I cut out earlier. And because I stamp... I cut it out and then I stamped it on the page. You can now see that all of my cutouts have legs, all my little bees. And I didn't have to worry about actually having to cut that out of paper because it's nearly impossible. So. so now after I place down some of those bees, I'm going to glue down the uh, piece of burlap and the tissue paper now in the center. And then I decided I wanted even more bees, so I'm stamping down some more bees using that same technique as we did earlier with the masking tape because these are still all the worker bees and there's going to only be one queen bee which you can see uh she's somewhere she's over to the right here now of the page just sitting there because she's going to be put down in a minute but so on top of the burlap now i'm putting another piece of the tissue paper this is just a scrap but i saved it because it fit perfectly when i was tearing it earlier and then I'm going in with some tiny pieces of washi tape. And this is from the Vicky Boutin Wildflower and Honey sets. This is two of the rolls that are included in the, in the kit. So I'm just tearing them up really small and sticking them around different places to add just some color to my collage. And if you uh, want to make sure that your washi tape uh, stays in place, because it is just um, a very low-tack tape, I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of glue on the back of that to make sure that it stays in place and doesn't lift up later. So I'm pulling out uh, my glue again and just putting a little bit on that washi tape to ensure that it stays in place. And I think of this more as a collaging element than I do an actual tape or an adhesive. So then I'm now I'm going in with a skirbel stick, and this is in the color cheddar, and a wet brush. And I'm just uh, picking up some of the pigment right from the stick and then painting it onto the bee. So I'm putting the darker color on the left side of the body and then with my wet brush dragging it out towards the right side so I get that shadowing. And uh, this is a really easy way to add color without a lot of work or effort because it's just literally uh, the brush right to the stick and uh, you can get all different kinds of shading and, and color with this. And that's going to help the bees that are around the center pop out from the background. So I'm also going to add a little bit of color to the queen bee. And then I wanted to add some cheddar dots, so I just got that scribble stick really wet by dunking it in a thing of water and then whacking it with my brush. And I'm go also going to use uh, gloss spray in the color gilt and just using the end of the nozzle to add really tiny dots of metallic gold all over the page. And the camera's not really picking it up, but you can really see it in the close-up pictures. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of Finnabar liquid acrylic in black. And I just watered that down slightly so I can get little tiny drips of black paint all over this as well. And again, the camera doesn't really show it, but they're, they are there. They're really, really tiny. You can see here in the zoom up, in the close up here, that all the tiny little bits of black dots. So now that all my layers are done, I'm going to place down the queen bee. And I'm doing that using glossy accents. And what many people don't know is that you can actually use glossy accents as an adhesive. So I'm, I did that. And then I'm also going to put some glossy accents on top of the, the 
queen bee's wings and this is going to dry to a clear hard enamel so that there's a little bit of shine on the wings now it does look kind of milky when you first put it on but i promise if you leave it to sit and let it dry completely it will dry to a nice clear enamel and with that my page is done Thank you so much for watching and following along, and I'd love to see what you're creating in your art journals, so be sure to share with us on social media using hashtag ArtJournalJunction. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our future mixed media projects and art journaling videos. Have a wonderful day.